Hello students, welcome back to a new mathematics program for grade 9. Today we are going to talk about the chapter trigonometry. Well, this video is the first part of a series of free videos based on this chapter. But first of all, let's see what you're going to learn in this very first program. First, let's have a look at the definition of trigonometry. Well, trigonometry is derived from the Greek word trigonon, meaning triangle, and metron, meaning measure. Trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that studies relationships between side length and angles of triangles. So basically, in this chapter, you're going to work with triangles and find relationships between the length and the angles. Students, trigonometry is widely used in the field of engineering, astronomy, architecture, navigation, surveying, the building industry, and in many other branches of science. However, trigonometry can also be used in real life for simple practical measurements. Well, before taking another example of using trigonometry in real life, let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought, how high is your school? Or how high is your house? Well, through a simple activity, I'm going to show to you how you can measure the height of your school, your house, or any high building. To do this, you will need some simple mathematical tools, such as a drinking straw, a protractor, some scotch tape, and a measuring tape. The procedures are as follows. First, you tape the drinking straw to the protractor at the 45 degree angle mark. Then you hold the protractor with its flat side level with the horizon and see through the drinking straw as in the picture below. Then you walk a distance away from the building until you can see the top of the straw. Since you are sighting the top of the building at a 45 degree angle, your distance from the building is equal to the height of the building because, in fact, you have created an isosceles right angle triangle. That is, the height and the base are equal. So you measure your distance from the building, you will know its height. That is, the distance you have walked away from the building will be same as the height of the building. Students, in this chapter, you're going to work mainly with right angled triangle. A right angle triangle is a triangle with a right angle, that is an angle of 90 degrees. In every right angle triangle, you have one side which is the longest, and this longest side is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle or it is the side which never touches the right angle. Dear students, remember that in grade 8, you worked on Pythagoras' theorem. So for every right angle triangle, if you have a hypotenuse, the square of this hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. For this triangle ABC, AC is the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse to the square equal to the sum of the squares of the two sides, that is AC square equal to AB square plus BC square. Students, now let's have a look at how to use the Pythagoras theorem to find an unknown side in a right angle triangle. So in this triangle ABC, the side AB equal to 3 centimeters and the side BC is equal to 4 centimeters you are asked to calculate the length of the side AC. So using Pythagoras' theorem, you're going to write the hypotenuse to the square equal to the sum of the squares of the remaining two sides. Here you have AC square equal to AB square plus BC square. That is, AC square equal to 3 to the square plus 4 to the square. Simplifying this equation, you have AC square equal to 9 plus 16. That is, 25. Now, if you have AC square equal to 25, to obtain AC, 
definitely you're going to find the square root of 25 which is of course equal to 5 centimeters. Let's have a look at another example where we can use the Pythagoras theorem to calculate an unknown side. Here in this triangle PQR, you have the length of PQ is 5 centimeters and the length of PR is equal to 13 centimeters. You are asked to calculate the length of the side QR. So using the Pythagoras theorem, you're going to write the hypotenuse to the square equal to the sum of the squares of the remaining sides. That is PR square equal to PQ square plus QR square. Replacing the value of PR and the value of PQ, you will have 13 to the square equal to 5 square plus QR to the square. Simplifying this equation, you have 169 equal to 25 plus QR square. Now, to obtain QR square, you are going to subtract 25 from 169, that is QR square equal to 144. To obtain QR, of course, you're going to take the square root of 144, which is equal to 12 centimeters. Now, let's have a look at this example, where we have a triangle ABC and the side AB is given as 5 centimeters. Suppose now we decide to use the Pythagoras theorem to calculate the length of the side AC. So you will have AC square equal to AB square plus BC square. In this example, only the side AB is known, so we are going to have AC square equal to 5 square plus BC square. In this equation, BC is not known. That is, we have an equation with two unknowns. Both AC and BC are unknown, so we cannot proceed further with this equation. In this case, the Pythagoras theorem cannot be used as we do not have enough information. So we must have an alternative way of answering such a question. So here comes the importance of trigonometric ratios. But before learning about trigonometric ratios, consider the following right angle triangle. In this right angle triangle, ABC, you know that the longest side is called the hypotenuse, which is always opposite the right angle. Now suppose we have an angle X inside this triangle. We're going to say that the side which is opposite to this angle X is called the opposite of X. And the side which touches the angle X is called the adjacent of X. Now, we are going to relate these three sides, that is, hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent, through trigonometric ratios. Sine, cosine, and tangent are three important trigonometric ratios, and they are abbreviated as sine, S-I-N, cos, C-O-S, and tan, T-A-N. In fact, to avoid confusion between sine and cosine, it's better to use the abbreviation sine and cos. Now let's have a look at this right angle triangle, where we know that the side which is opposite the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. If we have an angle X, the side opposite to this angle is called opposite of X, and the side which touches the angle is called the adjacent of X. Now we are going to learn about the trigonometric ratios. The first one, sine of angle X equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The second trigonometric ratio is cos. Cos of angle X equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of angle X equal to opposite over adjacent. Now you have seen the three trigonometric ratios, sine, cos, and tan. However, whenever you are writing these trigonometric ratios, you must always write the trigonometric ratio with its angle. That is, whenever we are talking about sine, we must talk about sine of the angle. 
Here, the angle is x, so we write sine x. We cannot write simply sine. We must write sine of the angle we are working with. Similarly, for cos and tan, here we have cos x equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and tan x equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, let's see how to calculate these trigonometric ratios from a given triangle. But before that, let's find out a simple way to remember these three trigonometric ratios. In fact, we can remember these three trigonometric ratios through the acronym SOCATOIS. What is SOCATOIS? Now consider this triangle where you have the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent. So SOH stands for sine equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is the side which is opposite to the angle, and the hypotenuse is the longest side. In the acronym SOCATOIS, CAH stands for cos x equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent side is the side which touches the angle x, and hypotenuse is the longest side. Similarly for TOA, TOA stands for tan x, it is equal to opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is the side which does not touch the angle x, and the adjacent side is the side which touch the angle x. Now, with this acronym, you can remember the three trigonometric ratios at the same time. Consider the following triangle, where you have angle x, the hypotenuse is 5 cm, the side which touches the angle x is 4 cm, and the side which is opposite the angle x is 3 cm. First, we are going to write down the name of each side. The hypotenuse is the longest one. The side which is opposite to the angle x is called the opposite side. And the side which touches the angle x is called the adjacent of angle x. We have just learned about sine of angle x, which is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. For this triangle, the opposite side is 3 cm and the hypotenuse is 5 cm. So for this triangle, the trigonometric ratio sine x it is equal to 3 over 5. Concerning cos x, which is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, for this triangle, it is equal to 4 over 5. The length of the adjacent side is 4 cm and the hypotenuse is 5 cm. So cos x equal to 4 over 5. Similarly, for tan x, which is equal to opposite over adjacent, for this triangle, it will be equal to 3 over 4. Let's have a look at another triangle where we have an angle of 30 degrees. Of course, we are talking about right angle triangle. In this right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is 5.0 centimeters. The adjacent side, which you already know now, the adjacent side is the side which touches the given angle. It is 4.3 centimeters. And the opposite side here, opposite of 30 degrees, equal to 2.5 centimeters. If we write the trigonometric ratios for this triangle, we're going to have sine of 30 degrees equal to opposite over hypotenuse equal to 2.5 over 5, which is, of course, equal to 0 0.5. Concerning cos of 30 degrees, it is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse equal to 4.3 over 5 equal to 0 0.86. Tan of 30 degrees equal to opposite over adjacent equal to 2.5 over 4.3 which can be simplified to 0 0.58. Now, this sine of 30 degrees, cos of 30 degrees, and tan of 30 degrees can be calculated from a scientific calculator. What is a scientific calculator? Here it is, a scientific calculator where you have the keys sine, cos, and tan. You will notice the keys here. In almost all scientific calculators, you will notice the three keys one after another. To calculate the value of sine of 30 degrees, you are going to press sine, then 30 degrees followed by the equal to sine. 
if you have a scientific calculator with you, you can try it. You press sign, then 30, which represents 30 degrees, then followed by the equal to sign. You will have sine of 30 degrees equal to 0 0.5. Students, I'm now going to give you some exercises for practice. In the following right angle triangles, calculate the unknown sides. Of course, you're going to use the Pythagoras theorem. Second exercise, again, you're going to calculate the unknown sides. Then you're going to write the trigonometric ratios for angle X. That is, you're going to write down the values of cos of angle X, sine of angle X, and tan of angle X. Third exercise, if you have a scientific calculator at your place, use it to find the values of the following, giving your answer to two decimal places. Cos of 60 degrees, sine of 60 degrees, tan of 60 degrees, cos of 40 degrees, sine of 65 degrees, tan of 80 degrees, cos of 120 degrees, tan of 70 degrees, sine of 235 degrees, cos of 48 degrees, sine of 165 degrees, and cos of 98 degrees. Students, in this program, you have learned about definition of trigonometry, trigonometry in real life, revisited the Pythagoras theorem, and you have been introduced to trigonometric ratios. If you want to have some more information on this chapter, here are some links. Student, this video ends here. Remember that we have talked about the chapter trigonometry and this video is the first part of a series of free videos based on this chapter. So see you soon for the second part. Till then, goodbye.